I recently came across this painting and I love this. I would hang this everywhere in my house in a larger size. I just love it that much. And this is a great way to learn some simple things about watercolor too. So let's, let's give it a go. I'm going to use my Neato tape and Arsh cold press paper that I sure hope has good sizing. It's been luck of the draw lately, whether or not my paper has good sizing. So I'm using my Neato tape, my new all time favorite tape. Thank you, Mim. I love it when you guys send me stuff that I can use. Candy Kelly just sent me a really cool thing on my Facebook. Candy sent me this brush washer. It's like a nubbly plastic thing. You stick with suction cups on the bottom of your water jar and you can swish your brush over the nubs and it helps clean it. If not, I might just get one just to show it to you all. But remind me to send you the link. If nothing else, you can just decide if you want to buy it. They are a little expensive. What I think makes this painting glow so spectacularly is these bright colors intermixed with these grays and then these glazes of gray that I put over everything at the end. And this was such an easy, fun painting. I want to try it with you guys. I'm going to use some different colors. One of the colors I'm going to use is this Mamera Blue, Blue Primero Cyan PB15. I think that is a ph phthalo, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go with it. And then Opera, which I'm not sure how, I don't know how archival opera is, and it also has a warning this chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer, so be careful with that. This process will also be greatly enhanced by Prosecco. I highly recommend it. So cheers, y'all. So here's some of the brushes we might use. I like the square format for this to get the geometric look of this. So this is my blue cyan by Mamera Blue. This has a really good diffusion rate. And then my opera, which is just a fun, gorgeous, granulating hot pink. You cannot go wrong. And then my yellow will be Oriolan, Holbein Oriolan. Now, other Oriolans aren't light fast, so I like to stick to Holbein Oriolan. But if you use a different brand or a different yellow, just make sure you're using something that won't fade over time. But I like this yellow. It took me a long time to find a yellow that I like that mixed well with both blue and red. And so this is a limited palette, primary palette. However, instead of a red, a traditional red, I'm using pink as my red. And then the phthalo blue is my blue. And then of course, I'm just using a traditional yellow. And I did that because this is an abstract. So I wanted to have a little bit more interesting colors and just play with some of my colors that I never get to play with. So if you don't have these colors, which you probably won't, especially the Mamera Blue ones. Um, in fact, I sent out the Mamera Blue uh, Primary Cyan as a paint dot one quarter. So some of you will have it, but use what you have. Use the colors that you think are pretty together and mix well together. Just pre-mix all your, your three primaries that you choose together to see if they each mix with each other well. And even when I mixed all three of these together, I thought they made a really pretty dark gray purple color. So that's good. And I also like about the opera that, that it's granulating. And so I had learned that from painting another abstract. So I like that about the opera. I thought it gave an interesting texture to an abstract, so that's why I chose the opera, and plus it's super hot pink, so it really is a powerful color. And of course, the blue cyan is really powerful as well. So I thought it would be great to um, use some really strong colors for this abstract and really play them up against some grays, just like I talked about in my last video. If you haven't seen my new video that I released this week, June 26 of 2021, about making your colors look so luscious that you want to eat them. That's the video <laughs> on my YouTube channel. I talked a lot about using grays to make your colors really pop. And so this abstract is an exercise in practicing that. This abstract is also a good way to practice 
painting wet on dry. And it is also a good practice for those of you who are very shy about painting glazes over already dry paint. I've gotten some feedback from some of you and we will be doing a lot of that and you can't make mistakes because it's an abstract. And so here I'm just, I'm mixing up my puddles of color just so they're ready and I'm mixing my gray by mixing blue, pink, and yellow together and just adding some of each color until I get a color gray that I like, which is kind of a purple gray. And I thought that would be really pretty. There's not necessarily any rhyme or reason how I apply my colors. You can do exactly what I do, or you can apply them in the order you want. How do you think the colors would look best sitting next to each other? All right, so here comes our first wet on dry stroke. I'm using that two, actually that might be my three inch wide, flat, very cheap brush. And because it's a bigger stroke towards the end, it makes like that dry, interesting texture at the end, which I love that. So I was pointing that out. And now I'm gonna put an orange, I don't know. I, there's no specific reason why I chose this next color. I just thought it would be pretty next to that purple, orange and purple are across the color wheel from each other. So I thought they would pop together and I allow the wet edges to melt into each other a little bit. You can let your wet edges melt into each other a lot by painting closer to each other. And there's a, a yellower stroke there. The second stroke is almost all opera. The second has more yellow added to it. Now I'm getting some of my cyan. That very, very strong fallow, and I'm letting it, the edge of my brush touch the orange so they melt together a little bit. I just like that look. You don't have to do it that way, but I just think it's pretty for them to melt into each other. And look how that, that blue sign, I bought it because it diffuses, and look how it's diffusing into that orange. Love that. And as it dries, it's going to make a really cool texture, which in a realistic painting, that would be a mistake. In an abstract, it adds character and beauty and it makes it look sophisticated, like I meant to do that. <laughs> but it's just a really cool water color effect and that's why I love these abstracts. You can just let the paint do their watercolor thing, let them shine, let them, you know, give them the freedom to do what they wanna do. And ooh, a pure yellow stroke there and watch that, that blue and yellow merge together. I love to see that. It's just so fun to paint abstract. I just love it. I just like to watch the colors dance on the paper after I apply them to the paper and let them do their own thing. It's almost like they're painting themselves. And here's like a pinkish purple lighter and it's a drier stroke. I didn't necessarily mean for it to be. Oh, I decided I needed more blue. Okay. <laughs> All right, now just let everything dry so that when we go in next with some super strong pink, it will lay on top of what we've already done. And like I said, you don't have to paint the colors the way I am. You don't have to make your abstract anything like mine. But this is a fun way to see how the colors will shine through um, the layers above. I love that look and watercolor is so good for that. So I specifically wanted to let everything dry and then do glazes over the colors so that some of them overlapped and, and shine through each other. I just think that's a really pretty effect. All right, and then I'm going super dark, as dark as my mix will let me. And so I, I mixed really thick cream consistency paint, but I added a good bit of water because otherwise it wouldn't um, let the other layers shine through. There was one section of dark blue um, glaze that I didn't video, but you just do another layer of dark blue strokes and then let those dry and then do another layer. So this is layer number three for me where I'm putting on these dark blue strokes and then I let it completely dry again. So now we're back after I let it, this is the next day for me. And I'm just doing the finishing little touches and I thought that little yellow peeking out on the left needed a balancing yellow on the right. 
So I'm putting a tiny little brush stroke of yellow over there on the right. And your painting will need a different kind of balancing out. You're welcome. You're welcome to send me your painting if you want ideas what I think it needs, but you know, try to be the artist and look at it yourself and, and think, what does, does my painting need? Notice how I'm trying, I'm not trying to keep these strokes perfectly up, straight up and down, parallel to the sides. I want them to have a little bit of imperfection. And another uh, design note is they're not all the same size. And if they were all the same size, I think it would be a lot more boring. All right, what I want you to notice here is how I'm mixing my grays. That top little blip up at the top is actually opera. I don't know if you can tell that, but that's basically my red. And then in the middle is my yellow and down at the bottom is my blue. So you see how I'm using all three colors to create my grays. And usually what I find to get a pretty good gray is to use equal parts blue and red and then add a little bit of yellow. Usually that gives me a nice purplish gray. But of course, if you want a different color gray, just use more of whatever color it is that you want your gray to lean towards and then add the other two colors until you're happy with how your gray looks. I'm using an inch wide now because I want to have a different size stroke to add interest. And almost that um, these dark strokes are um, less wide than the other ones makes them more powerful and so they help balance out that super strong, wide, dark stroke over far on the far left. And I knew that needed a balancing out. And so see that small little stroke I just made? For some reason, a small dark stroke has a lot of power and it'll help kind of balance the painting out, almost as if you're looking at it as if these colors and strokes are weighted and you need to kind of balance out everything. So it all hangs together well as a painting. So that's why I peppered those little dark strokes throughout as my last touch on this painting, other than my signature. So I really like how it looks. I think it looks balanced enough that I'm happy with it. It would be fun to do an abstract like this and just keep layering and see what it looks like. Does it look bad? Does it look good? But this is something I would totally hang in my house. It didn't even take long and I think it's so beautiful because it's all about, it's all about the watercolor. It's all about the color of the watercolor. And I like that. I just love that about abstracts. It's all, it's purely about the art. It's not about the image that you painted. It's about the actual paint and how it interacts with the paper and how they interact with each other and about color and celebrating color. It just makes me feel so happy <laughs> to see this and to hang this in my house. It, it would just make me happy. It's, this is making me want to do a big, huge canvas like this with watery acrylic paint and just have something like this in my house because it, it's just such a happy painting. All right, taking that Neato tape off. Thank you, Neato. You did a great job no seepage even though this really isn't a kind of painting that would cause seepage because i don't even there's only one part of the painting where my paint touched the edge now one note that you might want to do that i think would look maybe one step better than what i did is not to have any of the paint touch any of the edges and that first stroke that i did i touched the edge so if i did that if, if i did this again i would try to remember to not do that to make it kind of look like it's floating in the middle of the painting. I'm trying to decide here, how do I want to sign? And the Arsh logo was showing a certain way and I didn't want it to be upside down when it was hung. And I love having the Arsh um, imprint or whatever paper I'm using. I think it's so pretty to sh let the imprint show. So I, I decided to just let the Arsh imprint be right side up so it reads correctly and that's how I signed it so I I almost didn't sign this because I didn't want to peg someone in to having to hang it a certain way but I decided to sign with the arch imprint correct and I'm using my Finisuke Tombow calligraphy pen my favorite pen to sign with that is it 
I can't wait to see if y'all do this abstract, if you like this project. I hope you do because I would love to do more abstracts. They're so freeing and they're just a joy. So I really enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next tutorial. Bye everybody.